Welcome back to the Course Creation Incubator. I'm Gina Onativia, online course coach and consultant, here to get you revved up to get your online course done and out to market. And I've got news for you. As a course creator, you're also a content creator. The two go hand in hand, which means I want you producing the best added value videos, blogs, podcasts, etc., on a consistent basis. Why? Because content is a huge deciding factor in how well your course will sell and how much dough you generate. That means that content, specifically your content marketing, can have a significant impact on how well your course does. Now, I've seen incredible course creators take their businesses to the next level, maybe even add a zero to their bottom lines and more, all because they became really great content creators. Because once these course creators were truly committed to delivering content each and every week with a weekly podcast, for example, or a YouTube show, or say a long form blog packed with added value, something clicked in their businesses and they were able to take them to a different level. One of the reasons this works and really the beauty of content is it solves so many objections for your potential student. You wanna answer these objections ahead of time, not when you're in the throes of selling your course. You want your content to provide a runway for you to inform, educate, and ultimately win over your potential students. That's why today I want to talk about a few areas when it comes to content. First and foremost, how to brainstorm the best content that converts. Secondly, how to know what to put out there that's free versus what to save for your paid courses. And then third, how to get way more consistent with creating your content. And in case you're wondering, Gina, What the heck do you know about content? You're a course consultant. Well, I've got some pretty impressive notches on my belt, I would say. I created content for Tony Robbins for five plus years, everything from event info to content for marketing, newsletters, campaigns, et cetera. Then I worked on Amy Porterfield's amazing podcast and learned the inner workings of how she does it. And if you know Amy, you know she's a content queen. And today I create my own content, which includes this podcast and advise dozens of course creators from all types of industries and businesses. So hopefully you'll be open to taking some of my advice. By the way, sidebar here, and I know I've become the sidebar queen of late, but this may feel like bragging or arrogance to you. And if you've read Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes, you know what a hard time she had with owning her accolades or even bragging about what she's done. Now, this is the woman who created Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, Icon, right? Now, I read a recent article where she talked about accepting an award at an Elle's Women in Hollywood event, where she finally unleashed her inner bragging. This is what she said. The other day, I came to the conclusion that men brag and women hide. Even when they don't deserve to brag, men brag. When men do deserve to brag, they're good at it. I'm getting this award for inspiring other women. And how can I inspire anyone if I'm hiding? On behalf of women everywhere, I will brag. I am the highest paid showrunner in television. Then the article is talking about she had crazy applause. The room erupted. For course creators everywhere, I want you to brag just like Shonda and not hold back. Because if Shonda can do it, you can do it too. And you will inspire others as well. Okay, now where was I? And I know that was a big sidebar, but when I read it yesterday, I was on the treadmill and I thought, this is so relevant to you as a course creator and I want you to brag and I want you to own it and I want you to be the expert and put yourself out there. Okay, we were talking about content to promote your course and I want to make sure you're giving out the right kind of content. Now, great content starts with knowing the challenges that your potential students are facing, which goes back to the pain points that keep your potential students up at night. Because you don't wanna create content in a vacuum and write and record about the stuff that you like. That's not how you build leads, fans, and ultimately customers. You wanna connect what you teach to what your people need. So I want you to make a list of the top five pain points and have those at the ready. Then for each of those pain points, you'll have a list of three to five topics. I made you a chart for this inside of your show notes. Check that out so you can see I gave you an example and then I gave you a chart for you to fill out your own topics and pain points. 
So the example I used in that chart is a fictional course about how to run your first 5K because I had to write about something that I knew and I know about running 5Ks. So challenges could be, I don't know where to start running or how to start exercising. Another challenge could be they feel intimidated, don't want to look ridiculous. And yet another challenge could be, I feel like I can't stick with it. I start and I stop. So if you look at the challenge of how do you start running or exercising, I wanted to think of some topics to go along with it. So here's a few. Five tips to make a treadmill your new friend. Seven fun yet effective exercises for new runners. How to start every run the right way. So I've got the challenge and then there's a topic or the solution to go with it. And that's just a few. Now, if you do this exercise before you know it, you've got 15 to 20 topics to play with for your content. So grab that worksheet, work out those topics so you have plenty of content fodder to work with that's really meaningful for your audience that you can build on. Now, one of the biggest questions I get around producing content is how do I know what to offer for free versus inside my paid course? I know you don't wanna steal your course's thunder, you don't wanna give away the farm, it comes up all the time. So let's clear it up today. First of all, I never want you to feel like you're giving away too much because really in this day and age, I find that very rarely happens. If you look at the big guns, they're giving away so much for free and for good reason. They know that to work with them, to pay for what they have to offer is a totally different ball game. So I mentioned Amy earlier. Let's look at her strategy with free versus paid. She has incredible free content. I get comments all the time. I can't believe what Amy gives away for free. Her podcast, chock full of info. Then she has her starter kits, her cheat sheets, so good, so much information. Now, Amy is 100% comfortable giving this away because she knows what's inside of her online courses is a complete experience that you can only pay for. You can't get it for free. By the way, you'll never give away too much if you know the fine line between what your potential students will pay for and what they expect for free. So I wanna walk through four distinctions about what I think separates free content versus your paid stuff. So first and foremost, I think the biggest distinction here is that with your free content, you're giving the what or the why, and then with your paid content, you wanna give the how. So that means you're introducing concepts in your free content, but you're definitely not giving it the how, the step-by-step, -step, the play-by-play -play of how to get it done. For example, with my content, you'll learn how to put a course together. You can pick up different pieces from this podcast. I have Facebook Lives. I've got some lead magnets. But if you want the total package, the step-by-step, -step, the system, you want to enroll for my paid accelerator program where I walk you through exactly what you need to get your online course done. Then you're not picking through pieces, trying to figure out what's what, and trying to put together a complete system. Now, that's just one. That's one distinction about paid versus free. That's step-by-step -step system. Now, here's another one. There's a custom piece that's involved with a paid course. You pay for custom. For example, my free content, I might walk through some scripting pointers and even how to structure your script, but to really walk through how the scripting works for you, you have to pay for that customization. Or even better, the next tier to have me help you script, that's a paid level. So I'm happy to give away those pointers because I know it's a different experience than when you work with me. A third distinction for free versus paid is that free is out there for everyone to consume versus paid has access to you. So there's more limited access to you. For example, maybe potential students can get access to you with your free Facebook group and maybe they'll get short answers to their questions. But you also know that inside of your paid course, they get hot seats with you. Maybe it's a special Facebook group only for paid students or they get group coaching. Bottom line, it's real, genuine time with you. You can't get that for free. And then fourth and final, your free content will give you some of the bones of what you wanna learn. But if you really wanna take a deeper dive and intensive treatment on something, you do the paid course, you do the paid program. You're only gonna get surface level until you put down your credit card and you pay for that solution. Now, the next time you're having this internal debate, if you're giving away too much for free, use these four criteria as your checklist, as kind of your guiding principles to know if you truly are giving away too much and you're not saving the best for your paid course. Now you may be thinking, Gina, you gave me all these topic ideas, which is great. How do I make sure that I get content out each and every week? 
which I know can be a challenge. Here are four tips for creating consistent content as a course creator. Well, first, it's knowing you're a content creator as well as a course creator, which I said at the onset. You're wearing that hat. This is who you are. You've got to show off your expertise in order to prove that you're an expert and you know what you're talking about. So your potential students learn to trust you and then ultimately want to buy from you. So I've talked about this before, about making habits, daily habits, weekly habits that build towards you having a database of content. And you could build this database all by yourself, or you can get help with it. You could hire a writer, a junior writer, a junior content coordinator, if you have a bit of money to invest in someone to help you. So it's about having those habits and rituals. So what does that look like? Well, having a consistent place for you to write down your content. I use Google Docs, I use notes on my phone, I have this genius idea workbook or this little notebook that I use to jot down stories. You really don't need a fancy system for this, you just need a consistent way for you to jot down your ideas so you can come back to it again and again. Now my ideas come to me while I'm on the treadmill. I talked about a story earlier about Shonda Rhimes, I discovered that on the treadmill and I brought it to you today. They'll come to me in the shower, they'll come to me on a walk. You wanna have a system that you can capture those brilliant ideas easily and quickly. So first and foremost, have a content collection system. That's number one. Number two, make sure you're getting inspired each and every day so you feel like you can create content. I think a lot of content creation comes from feeling excited and passionate about something. And if you're not exposing yourself to new books or movies or or people, right, which is sometimes hard these days, and experiencing new things, you might not want to create new content as much. You may not feel inspired as much. So you've got to put yourself in a place where you can feel inspired to create that content. Not to mention, you've got to give your brain a rest. So if you're working nine to five, if you're constantly working on action items and uh, overrunning your brain, your brain is not going to come up with new ideas. It's only going to do that when you give yourself a rest and you're on the walk and you give yourself a moment to breathe. So how can you build that into your day? I know I've got to really work hard to build that into my daily routine. And now I think the third thing is also you have to be not afraid to put yourself out there and say, I'm the expert in this. That is so much to content creation, just putting yourself out there. Having the confidence to do that is 90% of what it means to be a content creator. Now, this is great practice for you as a course creator to put your content out there and say, this is my expertise, because you're going to be doing that with your course as well if you're not doing that already. Now, the fourth and final tip to putting out consistent content, in my opinion, is you need a plan. You need a consistent editorial calendar. Now, this can be as simple as a Google Doc calendar with the content you plan to deliver week in and week out. Now, those topics you brainstormed earlier, those can be a start to your editorial calendar. Put some dates against those topics and you have an editorial calendar. You have a great start and you are a fancy content creator. (laughs) All right, that's it for today. I think I've filled up your brain enough. And hopefully I've convinced you of the importance of developing meaningful value add content each and every week. I'll see you next week. Please rate and review this episode, especially if you're listening on iTunes and then subscribe wherever or however you're listening so you don't miss one course creation morsel. Until then, go create, be you and be brilliant and get it done.